there eight ten inverse variation. So when we saw direct variation where x was the independent variable and y dependent on what x was, now it varies inversely. So, and it's very logical on why it would be inversely, because if we solve for y here, we see we get y equals k over x. So it's inverse because it's in the denominator. So if we inversed uh, where x was in the numerator when it varied directly, it is in the denominator when it, um, when it is inversed. So it makes sense to me. Uh, hyperbola, so uh, y equals uh, kx is a, is a linear equation where x is in the denominator is a hyperbola, and hyperbolas look like this. Or they look like this. These two, either this or this. So um, it's always fun, always interesting. Um, so something to keep in mind on what, oh yeah, here we go. So uh, we see the, the graph of the equation. That's because x is in the denominator. And if x is in the denominator, right, if this equation is y equals negative 1 over x, what can't be in the denominator? x, 0, yeah. So 0 can't be in the denominator, so x will never be 0. So that's why we don't have any points graphed on the y-axis, and also we know this will never equal zero because the only way it can equal zero is if the numerator is zero, and the numerator is a constant. So you will never get a value, a y-value, that will equal zero. So we'll get these, it will move infinitely close to the axes on each of these. Um, since it's a negative, it'll be in quadrant two and four. If it was a positive, uh, K, it's going to be in the first and third quadrant. So things to keep in mind. Um, we're going to find um, graph each equation. If the domain and range are both the set of real numbers, you may wish to verify your graphs on the computer. So we're just graphing this. Okay, well, I'm going to divide by X. I'm going to get the equation Y equals 8 over x, so I can plot some points. So my first point is going to be 1, gives me 8. 2 gives me 4. Let's do negative 1, gives me negative 8. Negative 2 gives me negative 4. I'm not going to do 3. I will do 4, so let's stay on the positive. 4 gives me 2. Negative 4 gives me negative 2. And the other logical one would be <clears throat> 8. 8 gives me 1. Negative 8 gives me negative 1. So let's plot a couple of those points. 1, 8 is right here. 2, 4. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, 4, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. And then we get 8, 1. And we notice that we get this. Whoa, that was a bad graph. We notice that we get this graph that looks like that in that quadrant. We know the other ones are going to be negative 1, negative 8. No, that's not where negative 8 is. Negative 1, negative 8 is right there. Negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. We got negative 4, negative 2, negative 8, negative 1. So that looks like this. And that is a really good um, graph of it. Now let's do this. We... <coughs> can use Desmos again. We've done this before. It's always nice to do it on the first one. Let's put Desmos and let's write the equation. I think it was xy equals 8. Yeah, so we look at that and those are our points. So we notice that we got 2, 4. We got 8, 1. We got 
negative 2, 4. We have uh, Come on, get to that. Negative 1, negative 8. So that is our graph that we would expect it to look like. And we can do that. Let's paste it underneath there. So we have a reference. Oops. There we have a reference. There you go. Good. And it doesn't matter if it's x, y equals 8 or y equals 8 over x. <clears throat> Good. Uh, we don't need Desmos anymore. Goodbye, Desmos. Leave the page. Good. All right, let's do the next one. We, again, have graph each equation if the domain and range are both a set of real numbers. Okay. So, do, sorry. Divide by x. Divide by x. Y equals 16 over x. We, and notice I didn't pick 0 for my x because 0 would be in the denominator and it would have no solution. So we're going to pick numbers that are going to work. Um, 1, 16, negative 1, negative 16. We can do 2, 8, and we can do negative 2, negative 8. We can do 4, 4, negative 4, negative 4. We can do... 8, 2, we can do negative 8, negative 2, we can do 16, 1, and we can do negative 16, negative 1. We could do fractions also, that would be kind of fun. If we did 1 half, it'd be 32, uh, but we can't graph all the way out there, so it's not really in our best interest to do that. So let's graph it, 1, 16 is going to be way up here, 2, 8 is going to be here, 4, 4 is going to be right there. 8, 2 is going to be here. And 1, 16 is going to be way out there. So that hyperbola looks like that. And then we have negative 1. 16 is way there. 2, 8 is here. 4, 4 is here. 8, 2. 2 is here, uh, negative 16, 1 is here, so that hyperbole looks like that, and we're done. <coughs> I don't know how many of these we're going to have to do, but divide by x, divide by x, hopefully they ask us to find the constant, that's more fun to, in my book, so when we plug in 1, this time we get negative 4. When we plug in negative 1, we get positive 4. So a negative k is going to be in quadrant 2 and 4 this time. Something that you should remember. So 2 gives us negative 2. Negative 2 gives us positive 2. We'll do 4 gives us negative 1. Negative 4 gives us positive 1. That's enough points. 1 negative, or 1, negative 4, so 1, negative 4. We have 2, negative 2. We have 4, negative 1. And if we wanted to do 8, that would be 1 half, so 8, 1 half. And if we did 1 half, so let's do that, 8, negative 1 half, just for fun. <clears throat> and if we did negative 8, We'd have one half. And then if we plugged in one half, we get negative eight. So that's also one half. Negative eight would be right there. So that just gives us a little bit more definition. Why would we do that? Just for a couple more points. So negative one, four. Negative two, two. Negative four, one. Negative 8, 1 half. Negative 1 half, 8. And that looks like that. So negative 1 half, 8 was our thing. Good. Divide by x, divide by x. y equals negative 6 over x. Plug in 1, negative 6. Plug in 2, negative 3. Plug in 3, negative 2. Plug in 
6, negative 1. Plug in negative 1, you get 6. Plug in 2, you get negative 2. <coughs> negative 2, you get 3. Plug in negative 3, you get 2. Plug in negative 6, you get 1. That's enough points. 1, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 6, 1, and that's all we're going to do there. But we could do the fractional work again. That works. Negative 1, 2, 4, 6, 2, negative 3, negative 3, negative 2, or 2, positive 2, negative 6, 1. Oh, that's a good, good drawing right there. All right, graph each equation. Oh, okay. So let's um, move the y over. So let's multiply by y. We get xy equals 4. Let's divide by x, divide by x, and we get y equals 4 over x. So we've seen that graph. 1, 4, 2, 2, 4, 1, that's good, negative 1, negative 4, negative 2, negative 2, negative 4, negative 1, so 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 4, 1, looks like that, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2, negative 2, 4, Negative, oh, negative 1. Good. Same thing. Oh, no. That's already in it. Uh, I wish to verify your graph. Sorry. So, 1, 6. Negative 1, 6. Negative 1, negative 6. Negative 6. 2, 3. Negative 2, negative 3, 3, 2, negative 3, negative 2, 6, 1, negative 6, negative 1, 1, 6, 2, 3, 3, 2, 6, 1. <clears throat> negative 1, negative 6, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, negative 2, and negative 6, 1. And this has some symmetry to it also, the axis of symmetry is there, um, much like a parabola. <clears throat> um, so let's cross product xy equals negative negative 9. Let's divide by x, divide by x. We get y equals negative 9 over x. So my constant is negative 9, but we're going to do 1, negative 9, 3, negative 3, 9, negative 1, negative 1, 9, 3, negative 3, 3, and negative 9, 1. 1, negative 9, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 9, negative 1. So not as close to the origin. So this one's going to be a little bit more flatter out there. It's not going to be we don't have as many points. So negative 1, 9, negative 3, negative, negative 3, 3, and negative 9, 1. So it still has the roundness. It's just, I know, I don't, I don't do a very good job. It's, you would think in a graphing tablet that I would be able to draw this properly. That's at least better than the one on the right. Sorry about that. 
Wow, we got a lot of problems left. Uh, xy <coughs> equals 2 times 6. xy equals 12. Divide by x. Divide by x. y equals 12 over x. 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4, 4, 3, Uh, 6, 2, 12, 1. And then the negative values, negative 1, negative 12, negative 2, negative 6, negative 3, negative 4, negative 4, negative 3, negative 6, negative 2, negative 12, negative 1. You don't have to plot all these, but those are just points. I mean, 1, 12, 2, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 6, 2, 12, 1. So more factors, the more, more points you can find relatively easy. Negative 1, negative 12, negative 2, negative 6. Negative three, four, one, two, four, sorry, four, six, four, three, four, five, six is two, twelve is negative one. And don't forget the arrows. Very important to have arrows. All right, yes, here we go. Here's some more of the math part. So math part says you are given two points. This is the x value in the first point, the y value in the first point, x value in the second point, y value in the second point. That's what those sub values mean. Ordered pairs, find the missing value. An inverse variation can also be expressed. Oh, Wow, so the product of the point of the values should equal the same. Okay, so replace it. That's fun. And then solve. Okay, I'm going to show you two different ways to do this, mind you. <clears throat> so we have x sub 1, y sub 1 should equal x sub 2 times y sub 2. So we have 6 times 5 should equal 2 times y that's going to be 30 equals 2y divided by 2 divided by 2. 15 equals y. That's one way to do it. That seems like the very easiest way. If it varies um, inversely, so we know that y equals k over x. So if we have an x and a k, so my y value is 5 equals k over x which is 6, and then we solve for k by multiplying by 6, we get 30 equals my constant. So we can take this formula, y equals 30 over x, and then if x is 2, 30 over 2, so y equals 15. That's the other way to do that. Um, this clearly seems like the faster way, but understand that either technique works. That's important for you to know multiple ways. X sub 2, Y sub 2. So 8 times 24 equals X times 48. Um, I'm going to leave this as, I'm going <coughs> to leave that as 8 times 24. I'm going to divide, I'm going to, Divide by 48, because I'm going to cross cancel. So I'm going to cancel the 8 and the 48. That becomes 6. This becomes 1. And then the 6 and 24. 6 becomes 1. 24 becomes 4. And 4 times 1 divided by 1 leaves us with 4 equals x sub 2. Guess I should have done that. Much easier. Good. We like that. So x sub 1 times y sub 1 is going to equal x sub 2 times y sub 2. 
x sub 1 is 5, y sub 1 is 8 equals x sub 2 is 10 times y sub 2, 40 equals 10y, divide by 10, divide by 10, 4 equals y sub 2. Yeah, nice. x sub 1 times y sub 1 equals x sub 2 times y sub 2. Um, 6 times y equals 9 times 8, 6y equals 72, divide by 6, divide by 6, y equals 12, and that is y sub 1. Uh, x sub 1 times y sub 1 equals x sub 2 times y sub 2. So x times 20 equals 8 times 5. 20x equals 40, divide by 20. x equals 2, and that would be x sub 1. x sub 1 times y sub 1 equals x sub 2 times y sub 2. 8 times 9 equals x times 18. 72 again equals 18x divided by 18. Is that 4? I think it's 4. 72 divided by 18. 4. And that's x sub 2. Okay, new type of problem. Good, now we see more word problems. All right, so if a 12 gram mass is 60 centimeters from the fulcrum, oh yes, this is so cool. So um, let's understand what a fulcrum, so that's a fulcrum, and then we have the weight one and the distance one. So the distance is how far that weight is from the fulcrum. And then we have distance 2 and weight 2. And that distance 2 is this. And that has a inverse variation. So the mass, sorry, I said weight. Mass times the distance should equal the mass times the distance. So really, really cool thing. We talked about how direct variation, indirect variation has to do with science and physics. Here's a great example. So uh, very, very cool uh, in order to balance. So um, love the real world part of this. So, and that's unfortunate. So you have a mass of 12, um, we'll say 12 grams. So you have this 12 gram mass. And it is, we'll say it's 8 feet. So the distance to the fulcrum is 8 feet. And then you have something that is 45 feet away. Think about it. Is it going to be less or more weight here? So mass 2. Well, it's got to be heavier, right? If, if this is a short amount of distance and this is farther, we're going to need a whole lot more weight in order to push it. If you've ever been on a seesaw or if you've ever thought about um, how that fulcrum aspect, when you leverage, um, so that's kind of cool. So we have 12 times 8 is going to equal 45 times mass Oh, my bad, my bad. Mr. Mac did not read. This is mass one, mass two. Sorry. Sorry. Mass one, mass two. So that's going to be eight grams. And mass one is distance. Nope. 45 feet, so we need to find distance 2. So that's going to change it up. So, um, because, here's the interesting thing, so this is 45, this is 12, so let's do that. Let's go 12 times 45 
equals distance times 8. Uh, I don't know what 12 times 45. 12 times 45 gives us 540. 540 equals 8D divided by 8 divided by 8. It goes into 54. Hmm. Oh, 5400 divided by 540 divided by 8, 67 and a half equals distance. So the distance has to be 67. So here's the neat thing is <clears throat> less weight takes more distance. So um, that's going to be, again, it works inversely. Less weight, more distance. More weight, less distance. That would be an inverse relationship if you get that. So mass 1 times distance 1 is going to equal mass 2 times distance 2. 4,800 equals 12m divided by 12. Divided by 12, we get 40 equals the mass of the second object. It is really that easy, but to see it in action is the really cool. So mass 1 times distance 1 should equal mass 2 times distance 2. 24d equals 64, 144 divided by 24 divided by 24. Distance equals 6, I think that is. Pretty sure that's 6, so that needs to be 6. It is, um, right? More mass, less distance. So that would mass 1 times distance 1 equals mass 2 times distance 2. So um, mass, mass, distance. So we're going to assume that the mass has to be more because distance is shorter, so mass has to be more. So we get 5m equals 280 divided by 5 divided by 5m equals um, 56. And notice mass is more, 56. So it worked how we mass 1, distance 1, mass 2, distance 2. So <clears throat> shorter distance, more mass. Or excuse me, more mass, more mass. This is mass, more mass, shorter distance. 12D equals... 360 divided by 12, divided by 12, D equals 30. So shorter distance. Yep. It worked how we were expecting it to work. 108 mass times distance equals mass times distance. So uh, more mass, shorter distance. So 108, D equals 540. Divide by 108, divide by 108, 108, I think D equals 5. Yep, distance equals 5, and we saw more mass, shorter distance. Sarah weighs 105 pounds, and Wyatt weighs 140 pounds. So Sarah, uh, if Sarah sits 8 feet from the seesaw support, so let's draw this. So Sarah weighs 105. So this is Sarah. 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 Hmm, 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 hmm. 105 pounds. <clears throat> we have Watt. Hello, Watt. Wyatt. He sits on this. He weighs 140 pounds. And if Sarah sits 8 feet from the seesaw support. So this is going to be 8 feet. So the fulcrum is going to be here. And Wyatt, since Wyatt weighs more, his distance is going to be less. So D 
distance why it must be less, right? Because it works inversely. The more weight, the shorter the distance. The less weight, the longer the distance. So we know that D sub W for why it is going to be less than 8 feet. So we do 105 times 8 equals 140 times, whoa, why it's distance. So that is 40, 40, 840. Is that right? 105 times 8, 840 equals 140 D sub W. Divide by 140, divide by 140. We're going to get a fractional answer. Divided by 140. Oh, no, or maybe not. Six. Six equals the distance for Wyatt. So Wyatt is six feet from the fulcrum. Uh, how far? Yeah, from the seesaw. Pretty cool, right? I mean, that's a really, really neat um, problem that works very well. Yoko, Yoko Ono, weighs 125. Lars weighs 180. If Yoko six feet, six feet from the seesaw, how far must Lars? So 120 times her distance should equal Lars's weight times Lars's distance, D sub L. So that is going to be uh, 720, 180. So if Lars weighs more, it has to be shorter distance. So we're going to expect a distance less than 6. 720 divided by 180, and we got 4. So 4 equals Lars's distance. So Lars is going to be 4 feet from the support, from the seesaw support. Fun. Hopefully you see these as fun. Uh, and they're fun because, right, they're, they're relative. We can really see in real-world problems and uh, we can see how this works out. Good luck.